One great part of early access games is allowing the community to influence the way a game is designed. Obsidian, the developers of Ground have embraced this. Through both their live streams and Discord, they allow the Grounded community to suggest ideas for new content as well as modifying existing content. In this video, I'm going to discuss the top recent community suggestions from the Grounded Discord. I went through the past month or so of suggestions and picked out those with the most upvotes. For those not familiar, any suggestions that receive at least 35 upvotes will be sent to the developers for their review. While this doesn't guarantee the suggestions will be incorporated into the game, it does at least put the idea in the developers' minds. If you're not part of the Grounded Discord, there will be a link down in the description. It's a great place to find other players to play with, share your ideas, and keep up to date with all things Grounded. Before we get to the top community ideas, make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can click the join button to become a channel member or click the link for my Patreon down in the description. Let's get started. So after scouring the suggestion channel in the Grounded Discord, I found 11 recent suggestions that garnered at least 35 upvotes. I'll be going through them in order of the number of upvotes received. So the first suggestion on our list comes from Salty Sweet Did, currently has 36 upvotes, and it says, My suggestion is they add gutters to the shed, complete with rain spout. I think it will be a cool kind of mini dungeon having to climb your way up the debris that is accumulated in the spout to reach the top of the shed. Perhaps there are items that have been tossed onto the roof of the shed, such as a frisbee. Reaching the roof could possibly allow you to enter the shed from above and get to areas in the shed that would otherwise be hard to reach, like a high shelf. This is a fantastic idea. Surprised it didn't get more upvotes, but at least it got the minimum 35, so it'll be on developer's radar. And I think this would be a great idea of adding depth to the game because it would give us a reason. Maybe they add a lab over to the shed. If you're not aware, the shed is where the grill used to be. So the grill is currently sitting just north of the koi pond. If you go a little bit west down the map, there's an open area up there that has a shed. If you go in the shed right now, it is empty other than having a drawing on the wall that looks like a kid drew it. So it's like a Easter egg of some type right now. But they're definitely, pro they're definitely going to update the shed at some point. Otherwise, I don't think we would be able to go inside of it. So this would, make gr this would be a great use of the shed. It would allow us to get to the roof of it. And I think it would also make sense if we could get on the, on the bottom floor, the ground floor. So we could get to that from the ground or go up the rain spout, get to the gutters. Now, one thing I would preface with this would be if they're going to do something like this where we have to go through the rain spout, I think it would make sense if the rain spout and the gutters up top had some kind of resource that could only be found there, which will give us reason to revisit the area after we've already explored it. Because one thing I see in some games is there'll be great, there'll be nice areas in the map, like a new biome or a new environment or something. Once you go over there and get everything out of it, you never really have a reason to go back to it. Grounded has done a pretty good job of keeping us acclimated with the entire yard. For example, you got to go to the hedge in order to get berries to make berry leather. And you have to go to the koi pond to get koi scales and sunken bones. So there's always areas where you have to go to in order to get it, which means you can't just stay comfortable in the middle of the yard or one area of the yard. You do have to explore. So if, I'm sure they'll probably take this into consideration. So if they add something like this, what I, like I said, it'd be a fantastic idea. Give us some kind of resource that's on top of the shed in the gutters that it's the only place we can get it. So there's a reason for us to go back there. The second suggestion on our list comes from segment 36, currently with 37 upvotes, and says, I've noticed that the oven pulls from storage, so now it'd be awesome if the spinning wheel does the same. So if you're not aware, if you're using the oven or the workbench, you can actually use items that are nearby baskets or chests without having to actually put them into your inventory. This allows you to craft or cook things quickly and efficiently. It was a huge quality of life update, and I think what makes perfect sense, and this is a great suggestion, to add that functionality to the spinning wheel, in addition to the jerky rack, because both those use the same kind of process where you have to place items on them and then they convert them into things. And I think this will this should definitely be used for any crafting stations that are added in the future because we're definitely expecting to get more crafting stations in the future since it's currently on the feature board. And I'm sure the developers will take this into consideration. The next suggestion comes from Beamer, currently has 39 upvotes, and it says, people have been talking in the backyard chat, which is one of the channels on the ground at Discord, and have had the idea of combat rolling. This could be a late game mutation bought from Burgirl, which allows the player to roll to the side and avoid attacks. This would be really good to avoid wolf spider attacks when you have blocked too much. However, I think that this should be exclusively late game, should be after killing the broodmother boss or killing your first wolf spider. I think this is a great idea. It would make sense to add more depth to the combat because currently the only thing we can do is either attack or block. And blocking, I know mo some people are very good at blocking. They're able to get perfect blocks almost every time. Others struggle with a little bit more. I think adding this kind of functionality where instead of doing that, you could roll left to right in order to avoid attacks would add depth to the combat system and would also make it more interesting and give us more options when we're fighting. So I'd love to see something like this added to the combat system and grounded. Our next suggestion comes from Sandwich, currently has 40 upvotes, and it says, as of now, the tameable insects don't really have a use. 
So here's a use I thought of for all of them. Now, if you're unaware of the pets that are in the game, the current pet system was actually a suggestion from the community. Multiple people suggested it during live streams. I'm sure they probably suggested it in the Discord over the time. And the developers took that into account and actually added it to the game. So the pet system, you can thank to community suggestions and the developers for listening. Now, personally, I've gotten a pet. I've had multiple pets. I don't really see a use for them. Although I think this suggestion right here actually adds a perfect system for them and will make me and probably a lot of other people interested in actually getting pets. And it says, for the weevil, the weevil will sniff the air and trails of colored gas will appear in the past walked by insects recently. Red gas means hostiles, green gas means passives, and orange gas means neutrals. It also highlights any creature in the immediate vicinity. Using the weevil can now be a useful tracking method for finding and avoiding creatures. This will be fantastic. It will let you basically almost be like a radar system where in the nearby vicinity of where you're located or where your pet's located, you'll be able to see any nearby insects. It would avoid the chances of getting ambushed by a wolf spider or running into a larva or something like that or some soldier ants. So I think this would be a great idea. It would also help us hunt some of the other insects that are harder to find, like aphids maybe that are hiding in the green grass. Next up will be aphids. So the aphid pet would quickly scurry around and gather all dropped items nearby. It can carry three before scurrying back. By default, it will return the items to you. If you assign it to a basket or chest, it will return items to said chest. Now you can quickly pick up all that pesky plant fire you left behind. This will be fantastic. Imagine, imagine you go around, you're cutting down grass, cleaning up a huge area, all that stuff that's left behind. If the aphid could go around and pick up like the smaller items and carry them back and put them in a chest for you, that would be amazing. Third is going to be the gnat. Gnats are currently not tameable, but it's, probably, it's pretty logical that they'll probably be added in the future. And for this, it would say you would equip the gnat. Rest on your shoulder, but when you fall, you can glide with much more maneuverability and speed than you would with a tuft. Now, this one I'm kind of a little bit up in the air on. I definitely would like to see if the gnats added to have some kind of feature, like suggested for the weevil or aphid. But allowing us, being able to carry us and have us not fall as fast or be able to fly further doesn't really make sense to me because I don't think gnats are generally that strong. And I don't know if they would be able to carry something that's that much larger than them. So maybe we could do something like we have it go up in the air and it scouts the area or something looking for certain resources or something like that, maybe. But I'm not opposed to this idea. I just think there might be some better ideas that could be used for the gnat. But I really like the idea for the weevil and the aphid. Our next suggestion comes from Gidditch, has 45 current upvotes. And this is another one that relates to combat. It says, it would be nice to be able to block with a bow. It's hard to switch to a melee weapon fast enough to block, especially with the mosquitoes. Blocking with a bow seems logical since you can block with a shovel. If you're carrying a bow and get attacked, block with a bow. That is all I have for the suggestion. Another great suggestion here. Those are the only thing that you're, when you're carrying it in your hand, you can't block with. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you can block with any other tool or weapon, why not be able to block with bows? I don't know if they're doing it for balancing reasons because you can basically just snipe insects from far away with the bow. So they're thinking maybe it's more of a ranged attack and you shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to get close to you. But everybody knows that the mosquitoes will get close to you pretty quickly. Even the fireflies, which don't really do damage to you, can get pretty close to you after you've shot them with a bow and end up slowing you. So I think this would be a great idea to allow us to have our archer teens that are in the backyard be able to block with their bows. Our next suggestion comes from Dak with 46 upvotes. It says, so I'm sure it's been suggested and or it's already a thing that the team wants to do, but I would love to see a sandcastle for the sandbox area. Maybe sand wasps or sand fleas if there are any tools or weapons that could come for those insects. If you watch my video on what to expect when the sandbox area is updated, you'll probably remember me talking about a sandcastle and sand wasp. There was a sandcastle in the game originally it was taken out with one of the updates early on. So you can find pictures of it online. They're not really that great, but it didn't really look like a sand castle to me. It was kind of looked like it was a placeholder. So I think it would make sense once sand is actually added into the sandbox to have a sand castle. And of course, I also mentioned sand wasps as an insect that could be added into the sandbox area. Now, this user suggested sand fleas. I will say that I had a couple comments on my video that said mentioned sand fleas. So I'd be perfectly fine with them adding sand fleas to the game if that would make sense. And of course, they would have tools or weapons that would come along with those insects, just like every other insect in the game. So this is a pretty good idea, and I definitely could see it being added in the future. The next suggestion comes from me and has 52 upvotes currently. I said, I would like to see periodic base raids added to the game. The first day of early access, we got attacked by larva, and each day there were more and more. This was unintended and was fixed, but now we never get attacked. I proposed having periodic base raids of different insects based on in-game events, they could be tied to killing a specific number of insects, completing labs, or when the story is added, finishing specific quests. With the raids, would also need to be additional traps to help us defend ourselves. I would also make an optional feature where it could be toggled on or off, or it could be based on the difficulty you choose. Mod could not include them, but medium and low mode could. The reason I want these added to the game, and I think they would make sense, is because currently building in the game has really no purpose. You can build these cool bases with all these different building options, 
but in reality, you don't really need to do them. You can just put your stuff on top of the baseball or on top of a tall, tall rock or on top of the wooden fence and the insects can't get to you, they'll never attack you and you're perfectly safe. So there's really no reason to build unless you just like doing it, which of course most of us like to do, but at some point it just gets boring and there's really not much else to do. So with the game being story driven, what's most likely gonna happen when the game is finished is I would see the far majority of players playing through the story once, maybe they go back through it again if there's additional content added, but more likely than not, they're just gonna play through the game and then move on to something else. I think this game could have a long lifespan if they added a feature like this where it was either in the base game or if they added a standalone endless survival mode like a horde mode or something where periodically you just get attacked based on how much you progressed in the game. It would give more depth to the game. It would let us add more building options. We could have more building options, more traps. It would give us, we'd have more strategy. They could have more insects. I think it would be a fantastic addition to the game. Of course, I'm kind of biased because this is my, my, my suggestion, but in my opinion, I think this would be a great addition to the game and it would definitely encourage me to play, with the, play the game more often and to stick with the game after it's finished. Our next suggestion comes from Gilgamesh has 55 upvotes currently. It says, a thought occurred to me a while ago while reading through this channel and thinking about the mint mace. We may not see metal tools, weapons, armor, etc. However, I do still very much want a process similar to metalworking in the game. Then it hit me, in the same vein as the mint mace, I introduce you with candy pulling. Introduce hopefully with a Halloween update, though any update will be fine, are hard candies, the pulling machine, and a few recipes related to this process. Hard candies require a tier two hammer or greater to break, possibly a tier three hammer, earning you a hard candy bit. You can eat them, of course, just like any human food. However, we, where they really shine is being cooked in the oven to make molten sugar, which can then be put in the pulling machine to create sugar ingots. These sugar ingots can then be used at a workbench to craft various tools, weapons, and possibly some reinforced mushroom block structures, similar to weed stems or on glass structures. This is an absolutely amazing idea. It's one of the best ones I've ever seen, honestly. I would love to see something like this. It adds depth to the crafting system, adds depth to the resourcing system, adds depth to the strategy of the game gives you a reason to constantly strive to get the best stuff. I would love to see ingots, sugar ingots, or any other kind of ingots, similar to how like Minecraft has different ingots, other games have different kind of metal working like that, just to make better weapons, better armor, better building materials. This will be fantastic, would add progression to the game, give you something to work towards. And of course, if once you unlock these things, like I was mentioning in my previous suggestion, it would make sense maybe once you unlock this kind of stuff to have maybe stronger insects that you would actually need it. So maybe over time you would actually need something like this in order to kill the insects or just to survive. So this is a fantastic update. Like I said, probably one of, if not the best I've ever seen suggested. Our next suggestion comes from King of Pixels, currently has 56 upvotes, and it says, gnats should surround the apple cores just like ants do, as gnats like to eat overripe fruits. This keeps the backyard ever so slightly more alive and the gnat behavior accurate. This is a great idea. I think this will be something very simple for the developers to add to the game. Just having anytime there's an apple core spawn around to have some gnats around it, it'll give us a place to 100% be guaranteed to find gnats in case we're trying to farm them and get the gnat fuzz. And overall, I think this will be an easy add to the game, and I don't see why the developers wouldn't add it. It just seems like a really good option because right now the only place to consistently find gnats is at the lights over by the oak tree uh, right after nighttime or during nighttime. So I think this would be a great idea. Like it's like the user said, it would act, it would give the yard more liveliness and make it feel like you're actually in a real environment like a backyard. Our 10th suggestion comes from Soul, and it's for sunflowers on the map. If you watch my video on what I think might come in the sandbox update, you might remember me talking about sunflowers. This suggestion here, as well as some live streams, gave me the inspiration for coming up with that idea for my video. And basically what it says is, drop sunflower seeds periodically, much like acorns, breakable and give sunflower seed chunks and sunflower seed shells. Seed chunks can be roasted or eaten raw. Combine with crow feathers and sunflower shells to make sunflower armor, which would be upgraded version of the acorn armor, better stats, and upgrade to the blocking perk. I'd be perfectly fine with this. I suggest just having the sunflower seeds be something edible, or you'll be able to craft them into the SPF 100 smoothie that I came up with, which would protect you from the sun when you're in the sandbox. I'd be perfectly fine with them also adding sunflower armor as it being a stronger seed than the acorn. So this is a great idea. I think sunflowers are going to be added at some point in one form or another, so I'd be perfectly fine with this as well. Our final suggestion on this list comes from It's Me Andrew, gaining 63 votes, more votes than any other suggestion I've covered so far. And this says, now this is a small suggestion, but I think it makes a nice addition to the game. Every flavor of Puncho has a different color juice drop depending on what it is. So Lemon Crime to be slightly yellow, Tropic Hop being pink, and of course the others flavors too. I think this would make sense. I don't think this would be very difficult for the developers to add to the game. They basically just be changing the color of a different juice drop. The only question I would have would be, would this affect how we're able to consolidate the juice drops 
So right now, if you get juice from the juice boxes or if you get soda from the soda cans, you can put soda in canteens or juice in canteens. You can put soda in the water containers. You can put juice in the water containers, but you can't mix them together just like you can't mix water with them. So I'm not sure would changing the colors affect us? Would we only be able to put, for, for example, lemon crime? Would we only be able to have lemon crime in one canteen, but we'd have to have a separate canteen for the different flavors? Or would they all just blend together and, and just have a mix of flavors? I don't know, but that would be like a minor thing. I think this will be easy to implement and it's a pretty good suggestion because honestly, it makes sense. So what was your favorite community suggestion? Let me know in the comments below. I'm slightly biased for my favorite since one of my made the list. I would really like to see base raids added to the game, whether it be in the current game mode or if they added a new standalone game mode. I love survival games and I also love tower defense games, so having to defend our bases would make the game far more enjoyable and challenging for me. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to click the like button as it really helps my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.